In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fix your overexposed images in Lightroom. First, we're gonna go over the basics and why you shouldn't start with the exposure slider, and then we're gonna jump into some more advanced techniques. Let's hit it. So before we jump into Lightroom, I wanna talk a little bit about taking your photo, because no matter how much you know about Lightroom, if you take a bad photo, you're not gonna be able to fix it. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you just don't overexpose your images because sometimes that's unavoidable. Sometimes there's gonna be areas of an image that are going to be overexposed while other areas of the image are underexposed. And you have to do your best to get the entire image exposed as well as you can, but you're often gonna have an image where you're gonna to have to fix parts of that image. Sometimes it might be a mistake, but sometimes it might be the best you can do. So. When you're shooting your photos, just remember that most modern cameras handle shadows better than they handle highlights, which means you can recover shadow areas easier and better and with more detail than you can lowering or recovering those highlight areas. So whenever you're not sure, it's better to underexpose a little bit than to overexpose. To illustrate that, let's look at some histograms. Here's one that looks like you would think a balanced exposure. Here's one that looks like an underexposed image. And here's one that looks like it could be overexposed. In fact, this one, the one that you would think looks a little underexposed, is gonna give you the best amount of leeway to, to edit after the fact. You're gonna be able to recover those shadows better than you're going to be able to recover the highlights of the overexposed image. And in fact, even that one that looks like it might be a balanced exposure, you'll be able to get more detail, pull more details out of the highlights in the underexposed than you would from even the balanced exposure. So if you're using a camera that's been made in the last five or maybe even more years, underexpose your images just a little bit so that you get more detail in those highlights and it's gonna be easier to edit your photos after the fact. Now let's jump into Lightroom and look at some photos and show you some techniques. Okay, so in this photo, I have a picture of a field of flowers and a very bright sky in the back. And as you can see, if I hover over the highlight clipping here, we've blown out the highlights in this image. Now, ideally, I would have liked to have underexposed a little bit more and gotten more detail on those highlights. But let's say this is the image we've got. So the first thing you should do isn't adjust the exposure. And here's why. If you go ahead and, and just lower that exposure, the whole image gets dark. You'll, you actually have to go pretty far before you pull those highlights off of the right side if you're looking at this histogram up here. Instead, let's reset the exposure. The first thing I want to start with is lowering the highlights. I'm going to bring those highlights all the way down, negative 100. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you look up here at the histogram, we've gotten the right side of the histogram off of, or we've gotten the histogram off of that right side. And that means we've recovered a lot of the detail in here. Now, before I go back to the exposure, I'm gonna do something else that may be counterintuitive for fixing overexposure. And that's, I'm gonna raise the shadows and I'm gonna raise them all the way. So now this might be a little brighter than I want for this foreground area. But what that lets me do now is now go back to the exposure, the overall exposure, and bump it down a little bit. Now I've got a little bit of a darker foreground. Uh, maybe I can even brighten it up a little bit. But now I've recovered the highlights from the sky and I've been able to salvage the and not darken the foreground too much. So this is a process that I use in just about every landscape image that has a sky. I go negative 100 on the highlights and positive 100 on the shadows, and then I adjust the exposure to where I want it to be. This works a lot of the time, and it's probably going to be all you have to do in a lot of landscape images to get a nice balanced exposure. Then you can add on some more some more creative touches but this is going to let you get that balanced exposure. Let's jump back into Lightroom. One of the things that happens when you do this, when you lower the highlights and increase the shadows, is that 
the image tends to get a little flat. Now, just, just so you're aware, I didn't touch the whites or the blacks at all. Um, I don't like to touch those until the end because that sets your white point and sets your black point. And I like to do all of the any other edits I have, adding color, whatever I'm going to do first, because that kind of changes those those um, you know the the white point and the black point. But sometimes you might need to add a little contrast back in once you drop down those highlights and increase those shadows, because what you're doing is kind of compressing that histogram and bringing the the uh, the shadows up and the highlights down and you're losing a little bit of contrast so you just have to be aware of that if you're going to use this technique but three steps lower the highlights increase the shadows then play with the exposure that's a formula that's going to get you good results in about 90 percent of your images that have areas where there's overexposure that you need to fix so now we're going to Take a look at a little bit more of an advanced technique that lets you target specific areas of the image and the good news is that some of the newer tools that Adobe has added to Lightroom make it really easy to do this so let's check it out. So I've reset the image here and what I'm going to do and this is something we can do with a sky uh, you can use this for the sky a lot. I'm going to grab a graduated filter and I'm just going to bring it up here and I should have reset, I'm going to reset the effect, and then we're just going to bring down the exposure. Now, as you know, or as you can see, if you didn't know, you bring down the with the graduated filter, it's just going to darken everything that's sticking up there. And that's not really good, because now I just have a completely dark fence, and I don't want that at all. So we're going to jump down to the bottom here, and this range mask function. And I'm going to select luminance. Now what a range mask is, it allows you to target certain areas of the image based on the characteristics of those areas of the image. And in this particular instance, we're going to just use the luminance, and that means brightness. So this allows us to select areas of the image based on their brightness and I'm going to click on show luminance mask and now you can see the red shows the area that's being affected right now I'm going to change this so we're I'm going to raise the bottom so we're not affecting darker parts of the image and you can see as I increase it the red is disappearing from that fence the more I increase it the more it disappears so now we're not affecting the fence we're only affecting the sky. Now as I get into the highlight areas here, you can see it's disappearing from the sky too, and that's not what I want. I want to just affect the sky and not the fence. So right about here looks good. We can, yeah, prob probably right about, right about there. And as you can see, we're not getting too much into the grass or anything like that, and the fence is removed from the red. Now let's turn off the show luminance mask and let's see what we did here. So this is the result and it looks pretty good compared to it looks similar to what we we did with the global adjustment but it's more targeted. Let's turn it off and you can see that's where we started and that's where we ended up. Now what I want to do is go into the general adjustment and increase the shadows again to see if we can get some of that detail on the fence back and we can. And I think we need to increase the contrast a little bit. And there we have it. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And it helps other people find the video too. So this technique of using the range mask, it works with the brush tool and the radial filter as well. So keep that in mind. However you want to target your area, you can use the local adjustments, the graduated filter, the brush and the radial filter to get broad areas and kind of narrow it down to this broader area and then use the range mask to narrow it down even more so you're only targeting those bright areas. That's going to let you get a much more uh, targeted, much more nuanced approach to reducing those highlights and often it can get you a better result as well. Um, keep in mind that you can combine these techniques as well. So let's look at the image I just did. 
And in addition, you saw that I, I raised the shadows a little bit. I can go in here and reduce the highlights a little bit more and maybe play with the exposure. And sometimes I like to just go back and forth between these lo a local adjustment like that and using these global adjustments to fine tune the image. Now let's talk about a really overexposed image. And for this one, I took a shot right into the sun. It's not going to win any awards, but it's just I just shot this to demonstrate this for you. Let's take a look. Okay, so as you can see in this image, there's some areas of the sky, there's some color here, but this area right here is really overexposed. You can see right here, um, it's directly into the sun. So obviously it's going to be really overexposed. And I just wanted to use this to show you that sometimes you just can't fix overexposure. Now this is a drastic example and not, you know, sometimes this will happen in images that aren't shot directly into the sun, but I just want to show you what happens if you try to reduce the exposure too much when it's just blown out completely. So I'm reducing the highlights and we got rid of some of that haze and actually that's a, we got a nice little starburst here out of that image, but let's see what happens when I go down too far. Okay. So as you can see, this one was blown out. This is going to be pure white no matter what. But even if I go down really far and make the rest of the image dark, you're just getting kind of this muddy, off-white, almost weird-looking color. So this is a drastic example, but sometimes you're better off just letting areas of the image be overexposed, and that's fine, especially if there's sun in the image. No one expects the sun to be not overexposed. But this also works when you're shooting portraits and you have a bright sky and you want to get the face exposed correctly and you're not using flash or anything like that. Sometimes you just have to let the sky blow out and let it turn white and let it be overexposed so you can get the right exposure on your subject. So don't be so afraid of having parts of your image overexposed. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad image, even in a landscape photo. Sometimes there are areas that are just going to be overexposed you can do your best to mitigate that and try to make sure you still get some detail in the image. As you can see in this image that is shot right into the sun, as I reduce the highlights, what's happening is I'm not really getting rid of that nice clean white color in the middle. I reduced the highlights all the way down to negative 100 and it took away kind of that halo around it and I have a nice starburst here. So that's why I like using the highlights instead of just dropping the exposure because it doesn't go too far. It doesn't overdo it. So as you can see, the most important thing when dealing with overexposed images is knowing your camera and knowing how far you can push it and where you can recover that detail and where you can't. So the best thing you can do to help you get better for future images, go outside right now in the daylight, if it's daytime, if it's not daytime, wait till tomorrow and take a few images, overexpose some, Maybe go in one stop increments and just under go from underexposed to overexposed and take a dozen images and then bring them in the Lightroom and see which ones you can push the furthest, where you can recover the skies, where you kind of hit that wall where you're not getting any more detail out of the overexposed areas and learn your camera, learn where your limits of your camera is and your photos are going to improve tremendously once you understand that and understand how to use your camera, your specific camera, better. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe so you can see the next video.